Hello, my name is Dror Regev. Uh, welcome to this uh, tutorial about uh, LNA, linearity and uh, IIP3. LNA is the first uh, component in the receiver chain and uh, the linearity of uh, the LNA is critical to the whole receiver. Uh, the parameter that we usually uh, use to define LNA linearity is uh, intercept point 3. Uh, which I'm going to uh, uh, explain now. And the IIP3 stands for input intercept point 3. So um, for, uh, for uh, IIP3, uh, what we do, we introduce two input signals uh, into the LNA. It could be another um, device. It doesn't need to be just a LNA, but any other circuit uh, can be uh, characterized by uh, IIP3. So we introduce two tones and we measure uh, the output uh, spectrum. So if we have uh, two uh, cosine um, signals at the input, what we will find that at the output we will find these two cosines amplified. Uh, however, we will find more um, harmonic products uh, and the two harmonic products of interest are 2F2 minus F1 and 2F1 minus F2 which are very uh, close to the original product and there, therefore can, can be um, spurious signals that will um, degrade the receiver performance. Um, these two new uh, products, the third order products, uh, will have a third order coefficient and if we look at the input power of the original signals amplified uh, versus the uh, new spur products, third order uh, spur products. And uh, we will just draw the lines, uh, the linear lines of these products along the input uh, power. Uh, we will find a theoretical point of interception, uh, which is called the uh, IP3, um, the intercept point uh, three, uh, to define the linearity of uh, the circuit. When we discuss LNA IP3, uh, we should start from the input amplifying uh, transistor. And uh, the output current of this uh, uh, transistor, which was considered as a linear output so far, uh, is going to be actually um, non-linear in behavior when we talk about uh, the actual physical world. And so we will uh, just uh, look at this uh, output current as the sigma of polynomial coefficients multiplied by uh, order of the input voltage. Uh, and this this uh, sigma will be infinite but we can just take approximation and look at the uh, first four um, um, components of this polynomial and we just take it to the third order. So if we do that and we uh, understand that V in this, uh, in this uh, polynomial is actually VGS, the input um, voltage to the transistor and if we uh, take VGS as the sum of two cosines, as we explained in the previous slide. Uh, all we need to do is we need to find what will be the output current uh, resulted by this uh, voltage. And uh, we will just sum the output current at the different frequencies of interest. So at the fundamental frequencies, uh, we will find this um, coefficient as multiplying the two cosines. And so we have here uh, G1A, which was the, uh, the constant multiplying the cosines. And we will have another term here that is resultant from the third order. Um, and if we look at the third order products, uh, we will find that this is um, the factor that multiplies them. And what we can see here that is we have A to the third. That's something that we described before, uh, describing that these products really um, um, have third order behavior. 
Non-linearity polynomial coefficients uh, can be useful in describing uh, input uh, IP3. Uh, Professor Thomas uh, H. Lee has shown that other some approximations uh, and the assumption that the LNA is matched at the source to uh, resistance RS, the input intercept point 3 uh, can be derived as uh, can be seen in this uh, formula and uh, it would be two-thirds of the uh, G1 over G3 uh, divided by uh, Rs. So one can increase the IP li IP3 linearity by either increasing G1 uh, or by reducing the coefficient uh, uh, G3. And we want to increase IP3 because uh, we want to increase the linearity of the LNA. So let's see how we do it. One way to optimize uh, linearity through uh, gate biasing is uh, to find the optimal uh, VGS of the transistor that will uh, produce the most linear uh, operate operation point. So uh, in the San Diego University, uh, Parin, Brown and Larson has uh, published a paper a few years back uh, describing uh, a way to, to find this uh, optimal uh, VGS. So what, uh, uh, what they did is they looked at the um, drain source um, current of the transistor and they just uh, described it as a Taylor series around the point uh, VGS equals uh, VS and so we have an infinite uh, number of um, po uh, polynomial um, elements and um, by, uh, by using Taylor series we can describe them the first one will be just a DC component then we have the first derivative uh, to VGS multiplied by um, the difference between the actual voltage to uh, the point in voltage where uh, the series was developed and uh, then we have the second derivative and so on um, so this is the Taylor series around uh, the point VGS equals VS so we want to take these uh, derivatives and compare them to the uh, coefficients that we described before um, as G1, G, G2, and G3. So we can define uh, that uh, G1 uh, will be actually the first derivative of ID to uh, VGS um, at the point uh, of uh, VGS equals uh, VS. Uh, we can define that uh, G2 will be the second derivative multiplied by a uh, um, factor of half. And uh, it's actually going to be the first derivative uh, that is derived again. So this is the way we can generate these coefficients or derivatives in a simulator. We just uh, take another derivative and the third coefficient would be a uh, third derivative but it's going to be a derivative of uh, the second multiplied by a uh, factor of uh, three. So here we have a graph describing the first uh, three derivatives of the current, the ID current to uh, VGS and uh, we can see that if the models are correct enough, which um, we need to make sure, uh, there is a, a point where uh, G3 actually zeroes uh, and if we, if we take this point uh, in the VGS um, um, axis and we bias to that same VGS, theoretically we can get an infinite um, linearity or infinite IIP3 at this specific point. So going back to um, the equation that uh, Professor Lee has uh, derived for IIP3, uh, we can see that if we find this uh, G3 or very low G3 that is uh, described here um, around this uh, zero crossing of the VGS line, uh, we can really maximize um, IIP3. However, um, these uh, three researchers from San Diego University have shown that this um, area on VGS or this, uh, these boundary conditions are really plus minus 10 millivolt in VGS bias and uh, these plus minus 10 millivolts will change uh, with process and with temperature and so it really requires uh, very complicated compensation circuits to do that. Um, 
which they did and they showed that they can really uh, improve in lower frequencies around 2 gigahertz and, and lower uh, so this is a way to improve linearity uh, in, in, in low frequencies. In high frequencies there are some complications that are discussed in the paper but are not uh, uh, fully proven at higher frequencies. Uh, so gate biasing is really uh, a good way to improve linearity uh, uh, in LNA uh, but we will discuss other ways uh, in, the pre in the next slides. Okay, now we can go back and remember that actually our LNA has uh, an LS um, inductor at the source uh, which was used to uh, to match the input signal and which was used to uh, improve uh, stability of the LNA. Um, however, we want to uh, understand the contribution of this inductor to uh, IP3 or to input IP3. And uh, we want to understand if this contribution is positive or negative. So uh, we go and, and look again at the drain current of the the transistor, uh, which is now described in a very, very simplified uh, equivalent schematic. And um, what uh, we can do, we can do two things. Uh, we can look at the transistor standalone and just uh, describe the current at uh, the output as a function of VGS. Or we can look at the whole amplifier uh, as a nonlinear device, including the inductor, and describe the same output current as a function of the input voltage. So we have input voltage versus VGS, but the output current is the same. So we will be able to compare these two um, polynomes and uh, derive some conclusions around this. So here we have uh, the first description that is actually looking at the output current versus VGS. Here we have the output current versus V in. And by uh, describing V in as a function of uh, VGS, uh, we can find that um, there is some simple relationship we can do. And by equating uh, ID currents uh, for the same polynomial uh, uh, degrees, we can find uh, some relationship between the GI and the GI um, tag coefficients uh, to derive some conclusions about linearity. So we will now uh, compare coefficients of the two ID description, uh, nonlinear description of the uh, drain uh, current. And so we will find that uh, G tag uh, is uh, G1 multiplied by uh, this term over here. And uh, we will also uh, do some algebraic manipulations and we will find that G3 tag is uh, G3 uh, or it's this um, expression right here and basically what we uh, want to, to find is the ratio between G1 tag to G3 tag to see if we got any uh, change in the behavior of the LNA by introducing this, the, the source inductance. So if we do that, uh, we find that it is um, um, the original ratio between G1 uh, over G3 multiplied by uh, this long term. However, uh, with some uh, simplifications um, and uh, very reasonable assumptions, um, we can see that it, it is simplifies um, to be this term multiplied by the original ratio and because it's um, it's to the fourth term uh, we can see very easily that uh, linearity of the LNA is really improved by introducing the uh, source inductance. About the assumptions that we made here even if they're not um, fully justified uh, we can see that anyways the linearity improves. So, uh, and, and this is a fact anybody can find on a, on, on a simulation in, in usual LNA uh, uh, conditions. So, this is really 
something that designers use when they try to improve linearity in circuits, whether it's LNA or other circuits that uh, we did not discuss so far. Uh, by doing a source degeneration. It could be um, inductive source degeneration like we did with the LNA, but also resistive source degeneration will introduce the same um, linearity uh, improvement. Hope you enjoyed this uh, session. Uh, we just finished it and uh, you are most welcome to continue to visit our website.